Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today is going to be a fun, a little bit random video where I teach you guys how to listen to your body, to know pretty much what to eat and when to eat it. So let's just get started. This video is going to be super interesting and you guys are going to love it. So if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. I put out videos like this all the time for you guys to just learn how to deal with your eczema, learn your body, and feel better. So if you're ready, let's jump right in. Okay, I just got out of the shower, but I wanted to stop in because this actually reminded me of a very important topic that I need to talk to you guys about. Let's talk about hair loss. You guys all know these balls of hair that you get in your shower, what's too much and what's okay. So we all see that clump of hair when we get out of the shower. Whether you're seeing a lot more than what you saw my hair be or whether you're seeing a lot less, I can tell you what that means as far as your body and your specific health. But also today's video is going to be very light and fun because I have some funny stories to tell you guys, I have some life updates, and I want to ultimately teach you how to listen to your body. So in this portion, let's talk about hair. A lot of times when people are healing eczema, they actually have a lot of hair loss. So let's talk about actually what that means because this actually should be more concerning than you might be making it. So let's say you're losing a lot more hair than you saw in my shower. What exactly does that mean? Well, you could be experiencing some symptoms of Hashimoto's thyroiditis or like a hypothyroidism. Uh, basically, Hashimoto's is another type of autoimmune disorder. So your autoimmune disorders can overlap. Eczema is an autoimmune disorder, psoriasis, lupus, Crohn's, Whole bunch of different problems are autoimmune which basically means the immune system is attacking a specific organ so for us it's attacking our skin well sometimes things can overlap and your thyroid can actually become affected so some signs some some signs and symptoms of you possibly having hypothyroidism or Hashimoto's thyroiditis is hair loss that's a big sign feeling cold so when everyone else is kind of chilling you're like always really really cold you have a lot of fatigue you so basically fatigue means like by 2 p.m. you feel really tired and you just like don't have the energy to make it through the day so the hair loss is one of these really big signs hair loss can also come from stress so if you're not seeing any overlapping symptoms um, I would encourage you to actually look up Hashimoto's symptoms yourself. I will pop on here as well for you to look at. So if you're seeing some of these, what you can do is go to your doctor and get your reverse T3 tested. Basically this test will let them know and you know if you're experiencing hypothyroidism or Hashimoto's. And basically so like your thyroid is located here and sometimes I can dip into having hypothyroidism lightly, uh, some signs and symptoms, because I will actually feel as though right here swollen, I'm extremely fatigued, my hair starts flying away from me. So if you're experiencing that, that is all I wanted to tell you. Now for some fun stuff. I have a pet, and this is very entertaining. I was walking down the street one day, and so actually, in the comments right now, I want you to guess what type of pet I got. You'll find out in like two minutes. Um, also, if you hear my sinuses are congested, I had the flu last week, which is why I did not post. So that's why you're hearing that. I was walking down the street, and it was a rainy day, and I was on the phone with my mom, and I was like, oh my god, a snail! And the weirdest part was I was talking to my boyfriend the day before about snails. And so I was like, this is so weird. So it's this cute little snail. It was completely out. It was cruising down the sidewalk towards the road. Well, I was like, oh my God, it's so cute. I like want it. It's a garden snail. 
and it's brown and he's super cute I'll put a picture here and I was like well I live in the middle of the city I feel like the environment that I could provide him at home matches the environment he could get in the city we don't really have parks or grass or gardens so I was like you know I'll see what it's like to have a pet snail so my boyfriend doesn't really like pets so this was a very interesting situation and the funniest part was there was a UPS lady like coming like walking down the sidewalk so fast and I like stepped my foot in front of her so she didn't step on the snail and then after that I was like okay you're coming home with me so I took him home funny part is I had an interview that day and so I like put him in one of my plants back there and he's like chilling and then later in the day I like uh, pick him up again and he climbs all the way up this tree here and he starts eating it and that's what snails do but I was like get off of my plant and now um, basically he was on a new growth so it was coiled up like the new growth and he was on it and I kept trying to grab him to like move him and he would put his body around the stupid coiled leaf and he was just eating it and now that leaf is right here and there's a hole in it This is where my snail munched on my plant. And so my boyfriend gets home and I show him the snail. He thinks it's cool. And then we actually go out and get him a container so that I can have him here. So let me show you. Okay, it's so dark. Basically, this is my little snail's container. So he has a plant. Um, so he can climb up the plant and there's dirt up there, dirt up there, and he has food in here. Let me take the lid off so you guys can actually see. Okay. When you have a snail, you have to have a lid because the snails will try to escape. So basically, my snail is down there. Okay, do you guys see him at all? He's like down there. I gave him a sweet potato and some lettuce, and that is my snail. Off to the kitchen we go. I'm going to be making some breakfast. So I work from home right now because I own my own business. And so I basically make some weird food for breakfast and I'm gonna show you guys but basically the whole key of this video is to teach you how to listen to your body and what you want well what your body needs so for me right now you kind of have to figure out okay am I craving something sweet am I craving something bitter what's gonna be the best for my body so for me I I feel as though I need some protein. It's very strange to try to explain how to listen to your body. I feel like this is very conceptual. So you guys are gonna have to just like bear with me as I try to figure out how to explain to you how to listen to your body. But for now, I'm gonna go make something very intuitive and then I'll explain why I made what I just made. Okay, I actually figured out a way how to make this be very interesting for you guys. So, the other day, my body on the inside felt damp and wet. And so, if you have ever looked into Chinese medicine or you've looked into Ayurvedic medicine, it kind of makes sense as to why I'm saying that. <clears throat> so, I actually do have eczema on my body right now. It's not itchy, it's still the candida eczema, but it's been aggravated many, many times from stress. So because I just had the flu, my eczema took a very big impact. So, okay, you can barely see it, but I swear it's there. 
Um, I have a patch there and that's all we have, okay? So last week, my body felt very damp and wet and you could see it in my skin because my skin wasn't getting dry and healing. Well, it, I, I could also feel it on the inside of my body and I don't know how to make that make sense to you, but my body just felt kind of like wet, damp and wet. And I don't know how to put that into any other words, but if you know Chinese herbal medicine or like Ayurvedic medicine, it kind of makes sense. <clears throat> so today, as I was just cooking, I realize that my body kind of feels dry. And so when my body feels wet, I like to eat bitter, sour foods because they dry your body out better. So like arugula and kale and lemon and lime. And so I'll go for very bitter foods. But my body's feeling dry and I can tell because my nasal passages, like everything's very stuck. I feel as though like my tongue is kind of dry. My skin is dry, but that's a good thing because that means it's healing. But I just feel like the inside of my body is kind of dry. So I'm going to choose foods that are maybe a little bit more sweet. So I'm going to make the gut healing super soup. Um, if you don't know that recipe, it really heals your eczema super fast. I'll pop the recipe here, but also it'll be linked in the description down below. Basically, it's a bone broth base, but I'm going to seep fennel and red clover tea add the tea to the soup base add in thyme ginger garlic then put in beets leeks cabbage all sorts of stuff so i need to go cut some purple cabbage so um the beets and i'll probably maybe eat so like when i feel dry i like sweet potatoes because they're kind of sweet but i think this soup will do the trick i feel like that's gonna be good so let me go make that and then I'll check in to tell you how my body feels after I eat so that way you guys can kind of get what I'm saying okay we have my soup what we have in here today is we have purple cabbage mussels beets broccoli cauliflower carrots the broth is bone broth and fennel and red clove tea I have sea salt, coriander, and we have leeks. So I love when you eat colors. So we have green, orange, purple, we have red. And so all of these colors are really going to feed your body in the best way. Okay. After eating, I feel full. I have like food all over me. Look at my hair. This is like later in this video, I will be all put together. Just bear with me. After eating my breakfast, which was the gut healing super soup, I feel full, but not too full. I feel energized, but I don't feel jittery. I feel great. Like I feel amazing. I feel like my congestion's starting to break up. I feel like the foods that I ate were very healing. So thumbs up there and later I'm going to show you how I make a little chocolate dessert because you guys always ask me about chocolate so I'll catch you later all right I have had a really really crazy morning so two announcements one I have a secret project coming it will be launching on St. Patrick's Day and two I got a job and I just found out this morning that I they wanted to hire me and the reason why I got a full-time job is because my role here is to coach people and I don't want any of my financial struggles to ever negatively affect the people that I'm trying to heal my business is not going anywhere but I just need to have because I want to grow my business and I'm going to be doing some things like my secret project where I just need to be able to fund it, right? And so my current business is not large enough to sustain myself and grow my business. So I got a full-time job and I'm really excited and it's only going to benefit us. Um, it's going to be challenging at first to figure out how I'm going to film my videos and how I'm going to figure out everything. but. 
I'm very excited. It's doing design work and I live downtown. I'm going to be working downtown. So it's all in one area and it feels good. I love the people that I'm gonna be working with and I'm really excited. And now I just get to take the pressure off of my business and do the best job I can as an eczema coach. So that was a really big update. I literally, this happened in like a span of two hours and so I'm gonna go make my chocolate dessert now and show you guys how I make it. It's been a crazy morning, but I'm so excited! Okay, I have all of the stuff out. So this is melted coconut oil. These are my chocolate chips. So it is an organic, 100% cacao, unsweetened. And it's sugar-free, no sweetener. And then I have these silicone baking cups. These are new. And basically we're going to melt the chocolate into the coconut oil and add our own sweetener, which I'm going to use monk fruit. Then I'm gonna freeze, pour it in here and then freeze them. And then I'm gonna end up making some sort of like filling and then I top it with more chocolate. So that's basically what I do. And all you need is a chocolate that's just 100% chocolate liqueur. Okay, I let this little cup freeze. So this is frozen chocolate. And then I created this mixture. So basically what it is, it's maca powder, carob powder, cashew butter, oh the sun's coming out, oh, oh, eee. okay, we'll just work with the sun. Um, it's a little bit of hazelnut milk, tiger nut flour, collagen powder, sea salt, and monk fruit. And I basically will just create a filling, so. This is kind of the consistency of it. It's really, really thick, and then I just kind of make it like this, and I push it down into this cup to kind of create um, almost like a Reese cup. And so I recreate this recipe all the time with like whatever ingredients I have, and then I just push it down into this, and then I'm gonna cover it with more chocolate so then it is like a Reese's cup. Okay guys, so the way how to listen to your body is to figure out what's going on. And so let's just be totally transparent. If you are reacting after you eat, so let's say you eat something and you feel your skin burning and itching, what's happening is that your liver is overworked and it can't filter out all the toxins. So for you, you're gonna have to get rid of salicylate foods. So you eat on a low salicylate diet. I just want you guys to realize that your body is constantly giving you signs and symptoms of things working or not working. So if you're experiencing any symptom at all, listen. Whether it's a headache, whether it's a slight headache, whether it's you're feeling a sore throat, if you're feeling bloated, if you're feeling mentally any sort of way, if you feel uneasy, if you feel anxious, depressed, sad, mad, anything where there's no causation. All of those are signs and symptoms of something isn't right. So for you, if you're feeling anxious, it's likely, it's likely that your gut bacteria isn't happy with something that you ate. So what I want you to do is start writing down all the signs and symptoms that your body is telling you about yourself. So I was able to learn how to listen to my body because every time you eat, your body will react. And every time you stress out, your body will react. Anything negative, your body will have a reaction to. Anything positive, your body will have a reaction to. So really notice your thoughts in your body and write it down. And that's kind of what you have to do to start off to learn how to listen to your body. Then you learn what foods do what. So you can start researching different foods like, oh, what to eat for anxiety or you track your moods to your food or your moods to stress and you figure out what the correlation is that's how you listen to your body so for example i feel anxious when i eat grains i can get away with white rice but if i have oats or quinoa black rice anything that's very fibrous and hard to digest i actually feel anxious so i know to avoid that but I only know that because I was able to think back to 
when I ate something different. So if you get on a diet where you pretty much eat the same thing every day, you can try new foods, take away foods, bring foods in. When you have like a standard diet, you can adjust it to figure out what feels best for you. So my boyfriend does the exact same thing. For him, it's all about men's health and feeling good and confident in his, in his body. So when I eat, I kind of always know what my body needs. I've been jumping into thinking about Ayurvedic and Chinese medicine where it gets a little bit more complicated. If that's a good place for you to start, start there. Otherwise, I recommend just creating a symptoms list to a food list to a stress list and track everything. So with Ayurveda, well, Ayurvedic medicine, you can, it's broken up into doshas, which are basically kind of like body types. But for me, the way I kind of think about things is when my eczema is related to candida, which you can find out if you eat sugary foods and watch your skin get worse, remove the sh sugary foods and your skin should get drier. Well, I kind of think about it all in that way. So like, think about it in balance. If you've been eating a lot of sugary foods, you can kind of feel it in your body. So what you can do is experiment. For breakfast, have a very sugary breakfast. Don't eat refined sugar, but have like oatmeal with fruit. Think about the way your body feels. Write it down. The next day, have a very savory breakfast where it's something that's not sweet and see how your body feels. And that's how you listen to your body and you know what to eat. So as time goes on, you're going to learn more and more and more about your body. I'm able to learn more about you guys and how to help you guys the more you're aware of your own body. So anytime your body reacts, just try to track it down to what's going on. It's hard at first and sometimes people will try to blame the wrong thing, but all you have to do is test it and do trial and error and figure out what's best for your body. So today I ended up eating a bunch of chocolate. I felt amazing all day and it's because in the chocolate I had a very collagen, just like so many nutrients. So like maca powder is good for stress, the collagen is good for your skin, and that's what I put in my dessert, right? So I feel great. I'm probably going to end up eating in about a half hour again. It's going to be a salad with raw garlic, and it's going to be very bitter because my snack was very just like sweet and fatty. I want to counteract that. So that's kind of how I make my decisions of what to eat. It's like, how does my body feel? I try to keep it balanced between like bitter foods and sweet foods just to see what my body needs. So I hope that makes sense and I'll keep making videos about this. And if you guys have questions, put it down in the comments down below. And if you want to DM me, just go ahead and find me on Instagram at Coach Michelle Mills. I will see you in my next video. Bye. Thank you so much for watching that video. I'm now gonna go over all the different things that I offer and how I can help you further. So if you're looking for a support group, I do have a Facebook support group called Healthy Skin, Happy Living. It's a awesome community full of people all over the world. It's very diverse and people go in and just ask each other, you know, I, I have this problem, is it normal, am I okay? And so people will be like, yeah, I went through the same thing. If you need even more help than that, I do have coaching programs. It's for eczema specifically, inflammation related disorders and diseases as well, and I help coach you through that. It is a very specialized coaching. There is a video on my website that goes in depth. So I just wanted to tell you guys, you know, I have a lot of stuff going on and I can help you in such a large range of ways. And if you shoot me a message on Instagram, my handle currently is Michelle Mills underscore. It will be changing to Coach Michelle Mills very soon. Send me a direct message and I will add you to a support group messenger on Instagram. And everyone is amazing, still very diverse, very supportive. And I'll see you guys there. See you in my next video. Bye.